I was paying 16 euros every month for a voice to text service. And at some point I asked myself, why don't I just build my own service on my Mac Studio? And honestly, I didn't expect the price difference to be that big. For the last few months, I've been actively using a service that converts my voice into text pretty well. It fixes grammar, formats it, and also it understands the context of what I'm saying. Most of the time, I use my voice to give more detailed and longer instructions to Claude Code and ChatGPT when I'm working on my personal projects or at work. And for me, I realized that this is much faster and more efficient than typing. But then I felt like I don't really need to pay for a subscription if this guy is just sitting on my desk and doing nothing. So I turned my Mac Studio into Max into a home server that runs my own voice to text service. Meet Vox Bunny. Why Bunny? I just really love rabbits and by the way, these are my two. So my solution consists of two parts, a macOS client app that captures audio from a microphone and sends it to a server, and the server that receives this signal and sends back formatted tags without mistakes or filler words, which is automatically inserted into the currently active window. So um, let's build this beautiful and uh, efficient app to convert voice into text. And now let's talk a bit more about the client app. When I speak into the microphone, the native macOS audio framework captures the signal and converts audio waves into digital numbers. Then the app packs this data into Base64 and sends it to the server as JSON. Of course, not all at once, but in chunks of 20 milliseconds. And yes, Base64 adds some overhead in terms of data size, but I consciously chose it for the sake of simplicity. So what about the server? The server, which I wrote using FastAPI, receives these audio chunks as JSON messages through a WebSocket endpoint. After the server receives the last chunk, everything is concatenated into a single message and then passed to a speech recognition AI model. It's called Whisper. Whisper processes the audio buffer and then transforms it into text. At this stage, we already get a pretty accurate interpretation of what I just said. Um, so create a REST API endpoint that uh, receives a post request. But there is one problem. It is too accurate. A lot of words like um, so, uh, are just filler words and they don't really carry any useful information. And this is where the second AI model comes into play a Llama 3.1 instruct. Previously, I looked at different options and considering my hardware, I decided to go with this model for cleaning up my raw messages. I wrote a pretty detailed and specific prompt for this model and in my case, it does three things. First, it removes filler words and repetitions. Second, it fixes grammar and formatting and Third, it preserves technical context, which is extremely important for me. I constantly work with different technologies like Swift, Python, Docker, Kubernetes, and the model has to kind of understand that kubectl is not a typo and that npm install shouldn't be corrected into something else. After applying the second processing stage, my original phrase turns into a clean, concise sentence. Um, so create a REST API endpoint that uh, receives a POST request. Once the server fully processes the text, it sends the final result back to the client via WebSocket and VoxBunny automatically inserts the text into the active input field, whether it's cloud code, chat GPT, an email or anything else I'm working on right now. And to be honest, this is really cool. It's literally exactly what I need. Now, about security. Even though this app works inside a local network, I still added a simple API key validation on the server side, just in case. And when I launch the client app on another device for the first time, it asks me to enter the API key. I enter that key, save it, and now I can use Vox Bunny. I've been actively using this app for almost a week now and uh, 
I'm pleasantly surprised that during this time I haven't had a single issue neither with connection stability or with audio processing quality. And honestly, I'm really happy that I built something that I actually use every single day. And now I would like to talk about real numbers and whether this solution makes sense financially. Sure, I could loudly say that I replaced a paid app with a free alternative, but the electricity my Mac Studio uses is not free. So I checked how much one kilowatt hour costs in my region and it's 0.189 euros per kilowatt hour. To calculate power consumption accurately, I bought a power meter plug and measured energy usage in idle mode and in active mode when Vox Bunny is running. In idle mode, my Mac Studio uses about 7 watts on average. For the active mode, I ran 10 tests of different length, measured the average power usage during processing and got around 43 watts. Per day, I use voice to text for roughly 15 full minutes based on real date from my previous paid app. But the actual processing phase doesn't take the full 15 minutes. Based on my tests, the active processing phase is only about 15% of that time, which is roughly 0.0375 hours. That means idle time is 23.96 hours. Multiply that by 7 watts and that by the price of the energy energy and we have 3 cents roughly. The cost of the active phase is about 0.0003 euros, so in total it's around 3 cents per day or almost 1 euro per month. The paid app costs 16 euro 36 cents per month, that is 17 times more than running my own solution. So, is this local setup worth the time and energy? Absolutely yes. First of all, it was genuinely interesting and useful. I actually enjoyed fixing bugs related to decoding and fighting the correct audio device. And second, it's much, much cheaper than the paid app I used before. That said, I'm not saying the previous solution was bad, not at all. It is very efficient, has a great user interface and really good support. I just felt that I could solve my own problem myself and do it significantly cheaper. I also have an idea to make this app open source and developer friendly. For example, I'd like to add a setup wizard for the server part where optimal models would be selected automatically based on, on the hardware of the current machine. Thanks a lot friends for watching this video. If it was interesting or useful for you, please feel free to subscribe to my channel.